Book of Genesis, chapter 26. God's promise to Isaac. Now there was a famine in the land besides the former famine. Besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Gerar to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and will give to your offspring all these lands. And in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Isaac and Abimelech. So Isaac settled in Gerar, and when the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say my wife, thinking lest the men of the place should kill me because of Rebekah, because she was attractive in appearance. When he had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out of a window and saw Isaac laughing with Rebekah, his wife. So Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, she is your wife. How then could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I thought lest I die because of her. Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people might easily have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech warned all the people, saying, Whoever touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him, and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. He had possessions of flocks, herds, and many servants, so that the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped and filled with earth all the, dwell, all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. So Isaac departed from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water that had been dug in the days of Abraham his father, which the Philistines had stopped after the death of Abraham. And he gave them the names that his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug, out, dug in a valley and found there a well of spring water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac, because they contended with him. When they dug another well and they quarreled over that also, he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth, saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham your father. Fear not, for I am with you and will bless you, and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. When Abimelech went to him from Gerar with Ahazeth, Ahuzeth, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, his advisor and Phicol, the commander of his army, Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, seeing that you hate me and have sent me away from you? They said, We see plainly that the Lord has been with you. So he said, Let there be a sworn pact between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, just as we have not touched you, and have done to you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. In the morning they rose early and exchanged oats, and Isaac sent them on their way, and they departed from him in peace. The same day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well that they had dug and said to him, We have found water. He called it Sheba, therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. When Esau was forty years old, he took Judith the daughter of Beeri the Hittite to be his wife, and Basemith the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. So, in this chapter we see Abimelech and Isaac essentially communicating with each other and here i'm gonna open it back up because i <laughs> i need to be able to actually make a recap here wind is out here just destroying the ability to read this
So yeah, we see God make the promise to Isaac, basically continuing what he told Abraham. Isaac and Abimelech have their little well fight, and yeah. So basically that's what happens, and obviously I'm skipping over details. I have notes right next to me, and that's what we're going to be reading from to actually talk about this. But yeah, so that's basically all I can really gather from just like a bird's eye sort of view. So let's get into the notes and see what I put down. So 26 verse 3 and 4, God's promise to Abraham to be fulfilled through his descendant. So that would be... Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and will bless you. For to you and your offspring, and to your offspring, I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham, your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and will give to your offspring all these lands, and in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So, yeah, like, like I was saying earlier, basically God's promise to Abraham is now being passed on to Isaac, and that. Isaac will also be a part of that plan. First, uh, chapter 26, verse 5, 25, 26, 5, sorry. Well, just verse 5, because we're talking about this chapter anyway, but it's been so long since I've recorded one of these. Sorry about all the mistakes. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So, here we see God say that the reason he has blessed Abraham, the reason he has blessed Isaac, is because Abraham has listened to God. Abraham has obeyed God. And we must do the same if we wish to be a part of God's plan. We must obey God. Verse 7, when the man of the place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say my wife, thinking lest the man of the place should kill me because of Rebecca, because she was attractive in appearance. Alright, so for the note here, it's in verse 12. It's basically a, it's basically the same thing that Abram did before he was called on by the Lord. Well, he had already been called on, but before his, like, the Lord changed his name to Abraham, but, yeah. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife, then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you are my sister, that may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared for your sake. So that is a conversation, well, that's what Abram had said to Sarai back when they had gone to, it, to Egypt, in the same way that it reflects very clearly that, you know, Isaac did the same thing with Rebecca, Abram did the same thing with Sarai. So I just thought that was noteworthy, noteworthy so that's why I put it down. Isaac is blessed by God, that is, verse 12. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him, and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. So, the Lord had blessed Isaac. So, yeah. That's very cut and dry, that, yeah. <laughs> Verse 24, the Lord appears before Isaac and Abraham's promise. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you and will bless you and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. So yeah, here is also pretty cut and dry. Lord appears before Isaac, tells him that he is the God of Abraham, his father, and that he will be with Isaac and will bless Isaac and fulfill his promise to Abraham through Isaac. And verse 28, they said, we see plainly that the Lord has been with you. So we said, let there be a sworn pact between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you. 
that you will do us no harm just as we have not touched you and have done to you nothing but good and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. So here we see that Abimelech is trying to make a covenant with Isaac, seeing that Isaac is blessed by the Lord. He, Abimelech wishes to remain on peaceful terms with Isaac. I'm assuming that is... I actually don't remember if this happened, but I believe Abram may have... Wait, no, that's the Pharaoh. All right, well, I... I'm not really quite sure, but I feel like Abraham and Abimelech have had a conversation together before. I want to see if I can find that. Yeah, Abraham and Abimelech. So, Abimelech knows of Abraham. Abimelech knows that the Lord has been with Abraham, and he has seen what the Lord has done through Abraham. So it is through that same reverence, through that like point of view that he is able to tell that he wants to remain at peace with Isaac because he knows that the Lord is with him the same Lord that was with Abraham his father so yeah that's everything I have to say today thank you for watching well oh, excuse me just had a coffee before this so that's everything I have to say thank you for watching keep running when no one else is and have a blessed day gotta do the awkward stuff